Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Recently, I had the opportunity to represent uh, the president, President Ian Risley, at a local district conference. Now, what does a president's rep do, and why are they even around? Well, to let you know, there are 535 districts worldwide, and in each one of these districts, the district governor is responsible for having what they call uh, basically a party, a district conference. And at each one of these district conferences, it is also required that there be a presentation or a message from the Rotary International president representing Rotary itself. So um, because the presidents, there's only one of them, can't reach or meet all of the 535 different districts, they will send a representative. And these representatives are selected by staff or by the president himself. And they must be, one of the requirements or qualifications is that they have served as a district governor. So you have to be a past district governor, first of all. Second of all, if you have a, a lot of experience or background in Rotary itself, then that would be another one of the benefits or bonuses that you would have. Uh, this year I was sent to uh, Mexico. I was uh, requested by Governor Ubaldo Lara from Central Mexico, District 4140, to serve as his representative at his district conference in Morelia, Mexico. And I'm doing this show because I kind of wanted to show you, get a little feel of what it's like to serve as a president's representative, but also the requirements and things that you have to take a look at when serving in this position. Oftentimes, people will see a president's rep and have no idea who the person is, what they're doing there, or their function. And it is up to the president's representative to relay and convey that specific message that Rotary International is, in fact, a supporting factor for each and every one of the districts around the world. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first picture I have here is a picture. Um, this is our group as we arrived in Morelia, Mexico. And at that time, um, we were greeted in. It was about 7, 8 o'clock at night. We had traveled pretty much all day. Uh, we left at 7 in the morning. It took us a while to get to Los Angeles Airport. And then from Los Angeles, we flew into Houston. From Houston, we then flew into uh, Morelia, Mexico directly. So it was a pretty long trip, uh, average, I think we were about 11 or 12 hours on that trip. We were greeted by uh, the contingent from Mexico. The gentleman to uh, your right is uh, Governor Ubaldo Lara. So he was there with his team. The gentleman next to me, right next to me, is uh, past District Governor Rafa Palacio, who was my aide on this trip. The rest of the people that you see there are the team. One and only time that I've ever had the opportunity to have people from my district actually attending a district conference because these are usually international or outside of our area. Uh, this was actually the very first time that it occurred. Generally speaking, they aren't invited or they aren't attending the same conference as me. This is a picture of uh, the cathedral in Morelia. It's a beautiful city, very colonial in feel and in efforts. We were in Morelia, Mexico a, a number of times for diff different dis uh, conferences, but this one specific time was one that I actually got to share directly with the district governor. As you can see by the picture itself, uh, it's a very beautiful, beautiful city. Morelia, Mexico is in the state of Michoacan, almost dead center of the um, state or country of Mexico. We then went, um, well, to, to the hotel itself, and we were greeted by of course, the, the, the flags, the banner, representing this year's theme by um, President Ian Risley, and the theme was Rotary Making a Difference, or as you can see here, it's Welcome uh, Rotary Making a Difference, uh, if you translate that from Spanish to English. The uh, area itself was uh, very beautiful. This is a picture taken from up above. Uh, Morelia, the city of Morelia itself, is over a million people in population. As you can see, it spans a very large area. The center of that is the cathedral that you just saw at one of the opening uh, slides that I had. And this is, uh, I would say, the center of the city itself. Just about every city in Mexico, in the very center, will have a cathedral in it. So it's kind of fascinating that this area, as big as that cathedral is, continues to grow and expand. And so we are looking at it from one of the vista points high above the city. Again, very beautiful area very metropolitan, it is a good blend of uh, ancient to, to the new. The next picture we have is, uh, again, just more pictures. As you can see, it's a, a beautiful landscaped area. 
Water is one of the features of the city of Morelia itself. Water being, uh, they have uh, fountains there, they have aqueducts, uh, beautiful gardens, uh, a lot of garden landscapes throughout. Uh, and again, it's part of the colonial feel. This picture is a picture of the aqueduct itself. The aqueduct, as you see, is, um, goes down pretty much throughout the city itself. And they, they kind of kept it, um, that uh, ancient feel. Uh, and it's there, they actually have it lit up at night. So it's kind of a nice feature. Some of the historical features of all of the cities of Mexico, we talk about the revolution, um, both the uh, Spanish revolution and also the religious revolution. So you'll see quite a few of these statues and monuments representing and giving historical background to uh, Mexico itself. And so that, again, is part of the culture of the city of Morelia. This is a picture of inside the cathedral. As you can see, the cathedral itself is beautiful. Um, very ornate, very well done. They have mass, uh, masses there pretty much every day. And uh, again, the way the construction is from the outside to the inside is pretty astounding. Uh, they're very intricate. The first place that we went to right after we landed in Morelia was to a 90th anniversary party for the Rotary Club of Morelia. They, uh, again, uh, achieved 90 years historically, and this picture of myself is along with some of the past presidents of that club and the past district governors from the district, 4140. Now, 4140 used to be 4160 and 4150. But because of the um, dwindling membership of the two districts, they decided to merge them. So the representation of each one of these areas actually uh, covers everything almost from coast to coast. So we go from San Miguel de Allende on the east side all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Um, we have Puerto Vallarta, Mazatlan on the western front. So the number of uh, members is quite large. There's about 2,100 members now, and I believe they have about 133 different clubs. So a uh, pretty fascinating size of it. The, the city here, uh, Morelia uh, itself, was one of the older, more traditional of the clubs. And this is why we had actually, uh, we were entertained by an orchestra uh, that evening. So it was quite nice. We also had what's called a rompe yellow, uh, which is meaning uh, icebreaker. And then the icebreaker happened Thursday night. We flew in Wednesday night. So we had kind of a, a leisurely day Thursday during the daytime. But in the evening, they have the icebreaker, and at this one here, it was probably the largest icebreaker in Mexico I have ever seen. There were close to 200 people there. And so we had different people uh, coming in from different clubs, all greeting me. And as a president's representative, it is my task, my job, and my honor to represent not only the president, but Rotary International. And so the people are very cordial. Uh, they all greeted me. Fortunately for me, and again, another one of the first, is that I was in this district quite a few times. I traveled there twice a year, and because of the request, I knew probably half of the people that were actually in attendance at the, uh, at the district conference, including the icebreaker. So that's one of the fascinating things of being there. The um, next pictures that we have are some of the other people that had attended the icebreakers, and these people came, greeted me. Some of them were new friends, some of them were old friends, but uh, everybody was there to, uh, to welcome me in, and it was, uh, a, again, a very nice feeling that we have. As a president's representative, you will oftentimes be given that, that kind of treatment, and it's important to realize that, you know, you're representing Rotary International, and you have to be very cordial, very friendly. The two people that you see on the outside of this group are actually um, people from the district but uh, Yoshi, for example, he's actually from Japan, and his wife was born in Mexico. So the two of them, we, we got caught quite often speaking English, and then Spanish, and then we mixed it into uh, Japanese also. So <laughs> that's one of the fascinating things of, of uh, doing it itself is that, you know, speaking three different languages at the same time could be a little bit complicated. The next picture we have is a picture of uh, one of my friends. This is past district governor um, David Ranzone. He's also from Morelia and one of the members from his club. He wanted to introduce me to uh, different members of his club. Uh, this lady here I had not met before. Uh, great, great to meet new faces, new friends, and because these people become lifelong friends throughout Rotary. The next picture I have is a picture with another group. Uh, this group here is uh, a group from the other side or the newer. Uh, 
section, District 4150, along the coast. Um, this is Governor nominee, uh, actually elect. Uh, his name is Cacho, that's his nickname, and he's going to be serving as governor next year. Next year, the conference will be in uh, actually in Mazatlan. But um, again, greet, meeting and greeting with a lot of the different people. This picture here that we have coming up is a picture of the uh, a ladies club, uh, the Rotary Club of uh, Morelia Cavalinas. And they are one of the powerhouse clubs. And as you can see, one thing interesting about that club is that they're all women. So in Mexico, they're a mix of either all men's clubs, all women's clubs, or a mix of men and women. This club happens to be a, an all women's club because at that time when they chartered, they were not allowed to join the men's club. So they uh, started their own clubs. And again, they uh, kind of set the pace for, <laughs> for all of Mexico, at least in Morelia. And I believe there are nine different clubs in the city of Morelia. Another picture I have here, a uh, different group of people. Uh, these people here, um, most of them I had not met. They're uh, a newer group. Uh, some of them I had met. They came from San Miguel de Allende and uh, different surrounding clubs in, in that area. But uh, to have the opportunity to meet and greet some of the old friends that I've had along with the new, new friends is uh, quite an opportunity and one, again, that will have friendships that will last a lifetime. This is uh, an all-women's club. Uh, this women's club here is, again, from uh, San Miguel de Allende, and I have met most of these women a number of times. And this is kind of a reunion. Um, we also have members in the background of the um, Rotary Club of San Miguel de Allende Midday, which is actually um, expatriates. Most of them are from the United States. So the gentlemen in the back all speak English. The women in the front, most of them are all Spanish speakers because they're from two different clubs. This picture here is uh, during the conference itself. These people uh, visit uh, United States on a regular basis. We actually do an exchange there annually. The gentleman on the right, his name is Edgar, and uh, Edgar is in charge of coordinating most of my trips into Mexico, and also we coordinate with him because he comes into our district to do different projects, different grants. The gentleman you see next to me, uh, his name is Rafael uh, Palacio, and he is actually a past district governor. He is, uh, was serving as my aide. Now, as a president's rep, you are required to have an aide or an assistant, and that aide or assistant is responsible for pretty much taking care of you, making sure you don't get lost, feeding you, um, and attending to needs that you may have. One thing that people don't realize is that as a president's aide, the need for... Uh, an aid itself is very important because of the fact we are visiting with a lot of the people. And as you visit with them, what you don't get the opportunity to do is maybe get a drink of water or something that you'll need to have. There are other times when there will be people that will kind of, uh, I would say, dominate your time. And you want to try and get around to as many people as you could. The first day of the, uh, the conference, I asked the people, there's about 200 of them there, Anybody that had known me before, that had spoken to me, I asked them to stand to be recognized. And roughly 100 plus of the people actually were uh, stood up. So I knew over half of the people there, which made it uh, quite unique. On average, I only know between five and 10 people at most of the conferences that I attend as a president's representative. This picture here, again, is uh, of a women's club. Uh, this women's club I have done quite a few projects with. They uh, are great people, and you'll find that there's a huge passion for helping out in the communities when you go to Mexico itself. Uh, each and every one of these clubs are instrumental in making differences in their community. And for us to come in there and try and help out is something that uh, I've always enjoyed, I will continue to enjoy, because not only are you helping them out, but you're creating friendships, friendships that will last for quite a while and, and beyond. And they're willing to help us out, too, also here in the United States. There is a kind of a tradition. Each year during Friday night's events, they have what's called the club night. And at the club night before, in the past, the clubs used to actually do skits with members of their clubs, and they would come out there and have a competition, kind of like a talent show. Um, the quality of the shows or the programs, the, the talent itself was sometimes questionable, not always all that good. Recently, on this one, though, they brought together all of the exchange students, the international exchange students. In Mexico, and I believe uh, pretty much around the world, the exchange student pro uh, program that they have in Mexico is one of the largest I've seen, between 120 and 150 international students, 
high school age, will actually converge on Mexico for a year's time. And the picture you see are actually those um, students that are being immersed into the Mexican culture. They learn Spanish as a primary language. They live in the homes of uh, the people of Mexico. They learn their traditions. And they actually go to school. They enroll in the schools in Mexico. And they come from all over. I believe there was something like 30, nearly 30 different countries represented. Again, um, part of the traditions that they have is that they dress the, uh, the students up and they actually teach them not only how to speak, but also the culture. And so you see them here dancing uh, in a Mexican dance, that uh, very traditional in Mexico, using traditional uh, attire. And they practice. I understand that the students here worked on this for about two weeks. And so you have students there all the way from Taiwan to uh, Greece, um, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, everywhere. Um, again, uh, another one of the pictures, uh, there is a mixed group. There are mi uh, boys and girls that come through this program, and so each one of them shared this. This was only one of the uh, skits. There are probably about five, six different skits. This year, all of the entertainment was done with the exchange students, and so there are probably seven, eight different uh, traditional dances being done by these students. And again, it, it was amazing, something that uh, you, you find quite fascinating because of the fact that the students from these different areas pick up Spanish, they pick up the languages so quickly, and they really love what they're doing. Um, and you can see that in them. Again, uh, lifetime friendships from family and the alumni that come through this exchange program. One of the biggest ones Rody does. The next picture I have here uh, shows actually kind of, I wanted to show how traditional, how formal each of these meetings are. This is a picture of a meeting place that I will eventually uh, have a meeting with. About an hour later, that room was filled up, but you can see how traditional and how, um, I, I would say, uh, official each and every one of these meetings are. My job, my task is to relay forward information being conveyed by Rotary International, changes being done, and answer any questions that I could regarding those changes and how that could be benefited, how that could be implemented by each and every one of the districts that I attend to. This picture here is a picture of two of the past district governors along with some of my friends um, that were actually doing projects with us in the Morelia area. And as you can see, um, you have a mix of the more established uh, Rotarians all the way down to the younger people. And that is uh, one of the mixes that I think fi I find quite fascinating. In the United States, that's not always the case. But here, as a president's representative, you do get to see different cultures and different understandings. By the way, this was the first assignment I ever had where um, English was not the primary language. I had actually had to do all of my presentations all in Spanish, and so it uh, took me a little extra time. Uh, fortunately, I got through it. I did get to meet quite a few outstanding new friends. One of the uh, events that occurred during the district conference was bringing in a peace program. This is a new peace initiative being done throughout Mexico. It is not a rotary uh, project, but it actually has done with an organization of women in peace. The lady that you see in the middle, Dr. Um, Angela Gonzalez, is the initiator of this. And she is an artist. She designed the flags themselves. She presented me as the representative of the Rotary International President to the flag itself. And this flag is to be taken. I will be taking this flag to the headquarters in Evanston, Illinois, as part of um, a gesture to bring peace to the, to the world. Now, her initiative also included the fact that in Mexico, there is one, it is one of the highest countries in the world for domestic violence and also for um, abductions, uh, sexual abductions of children. And so that's why she wanted to bring this forward into all of Mexico, and now she is extending it internationally, starting with the United States, with the first flag being given to me to be presented here in the United States. So um, again, it's an outstanding program, something I'm looking forward to participating with in bringing that awareness. You could see uh, this next picture, a picture of the group of us. We um, have in this group um, the dignitaries along with all of the flags. And you will see in the background, those flags actually are being carried by one of the Rotary Clubs, one of each of the Rotary Clubs in this district. So, you can see how many of them have actually adopted this new program. 
The next picture I have here is a picture of the team that I actually took. This is during a formal evening. We have uh, with us members from our district. We have immediate past district governor in the center, uh, Nick Frankel. This contingent we do an exchange with because we are also sister districts with them. And again, as I said, never before had I gone as a president's rep and actually had the opportunity to have members of my district present. So it was a good time. Uh, the lady at the far end of it, that's uh, Savi Bim. She is district governor nominee. She's from Simi Valley. So uh, a good team. Um, I might as well go through all of them. We have Rob Klug next to her. He's from Lompoc. Uh, we have Nick. And then we have Scott Phillips. Scott Phillips is from Goleta, myself, and uh, John Mascarena from San Luis Obispo. One of the interesting things that this district also does, and one of the areas where I had to be involved with, is the crowning of the queen of the district. And I figured, well, this is going to be kind of interesting because how would you crown a queen that is representative of one of the clubs without offending or making this too political a statement? Well, the trick was, uh, the way they do it, in, in Mexico, in this district, they actually have between 30 and 40 young ladies, uh, anywhere from high school age up to uh, young adults. And they are given, each of them are given, as they march in, a small glass box. And inside that glass box, there's a marble. Well, there's only one box that has a white marble in it, and that is the winner. That will be the one that is crowned as the queen of the district. And she actually has an official duty to walk around and represent the district in, as uh, the years go on. This picture here is a picture, uh, a reunion time of, uh, again, one of the clubs that I've worked with quite closely. This is the Rotary Club of Pascua 2000. Uh, you've probably seen a couple of programs that I've done working with them. We have another program or project that we'll be doing with them with an ambulance. And so this is their group. Uh, we agreed to them. I had to visit uh, the nearly, well, there were actually over 600 attendees at this district conference. And because of that, my job was to make sure that I said hello to each and every person uh, that was there. So uh, again, it's good to have old friends, kind of get a little break between that and then, uh, meeting and greeting the new friends. This is a picture here of uh, the princesses coming in. Again, each club, if they decide to, will have a princess representing them. The princesses also, by the way, represent their clubs in their communities. And so they um, will go on, and if they even aren't queens, they will go on and represent their clubs in each of these communities uh, that Rotary is in. This picture here um, is, again, uh, one of the other past district governor friends of mine. Been working with him for quite a while. He's uh, been with uh, the group for quite a while. He's been actually here in the United States on a number of occasions. And uh, I would say of, of the group, uh, he is one of the few that actually had the opportunity to uh, meet my wife, Roxanne. We became very close friends. Uh, that was my support group to help me get through uh, that hard time when I lost my wife. Picture here, th this picture is a picture of actually a newer group. Uh, I had not met these people before until this district conference. They're so cordial, I, I have the invitation. I spent a number of times with them, so again, uh, it, was, it was very nice to meet them. We had, at this corner of the uh, auditorium, I had now made my full lap around the whole area, so that was kind of nice. This picture here um, actually uh, represents another group, again, a very new group. This group here I had not met before either. And I'm showing you some of the pictures because the familiar faces and how many times Rotary actually makes a difference. Uh, these people here, even though I had never met them before, I know for a fact that we will be doing projects with them there, and they will be partnering with us here. So uh, friendships go a long way. You actually become family once you start doing these. As a president's representative, you do have that opportunity to reach out and meet a lot of other people around the world. And that is one of the fascinating things is the international part of, of Rotary itself. This next picture was a picture, that, uh, actually we had a uh, birthday. And I put this picture up, first of all, because very unique. That's uh, actually a flair that they put in the cake itself. <laughs> Wouldn't see that happening here in the United States. But um, because we've been friends for so long, I'm actually a member, uh, honorary member of this club, Potsquad 2000. They knew I was diabetic, and they actually brought along with uh, that cake a cake that was uh, sugar-free just for me so I would be able to enjoy the festivities with them. So uh, again, uh, quite a nice touch, very personal, 
uh, enjoy those friendships forever. This picture was taken, uh, this next picture was taken uh, at the very end of Saturday night. And as you can see, I don't know how I did it, but I must have been drinking a lot of Diet Cokes and coffee that evening. This picture was taken at four in the morning. Uh, we were the last ones to leave. The job of a president's rep, or the idea of a president's rep, is that you want to be the first one there, but you should also be the last one to leave. You have to be cordial enough to greet everybody and at the same time thank everybody for coming. It's, a, it's an honor to be that position, but it takes a little bit of time and a lot of work. Four in the morning, my next meeting was in the next morning at seven o'clock in the morning where I had official duties of actually handing out awards to uh, some of the winners from that district. So again, <laughs> four o'clock at night, you, you get off and seven o'clock, you're starting it all up over again. This is the last picture. This last picture is on the last evening before we left Mexico. We had about two days there where we actually were able to visit with um, some of the other clubs in this district in that region, not too far away from the city of Morelia itself. But this is a picture that we took on the last night, and we were very uh, fortunate to uh, have met and been greeted by a group of Rotarians. This is the uh, Rotary Club of Morelia, Experiencia, y juventud, uh, experienced and young. And they will actually be traveling to see us at our district conference coming up in, uh, in October. So these friendships uh, will be exchanged twice a year. Um, we will be seeing them again very soon. The setting that you see is actually in a hotel lobby and that is how traditional they, they do things uh, there, there in Mexico. So uh, enjoyed every minute of it. The, one thing I would like to say uh, in, in closing, because I wanted to share with you not only the position itself, but district conferences, because they're different worldwide. Serving as a president's representative is a huge honor, uh, an honor that I take very seriously. President Ian Reisley, I'd like to thank you personally for uh, allowing me to represent you in Mexico, first time ever. Um, but again, next time you're at a district conference, take a look at the, what the international president's representative is doing. Meet him, greet him, and, uh, or her, and uh, again, they represent Rotary International. They are your friends. With that, thank you very much. We will see you next time.